the IAR-80 was a Romanian World War II single-seat, low-wing monoplane, an all-metal monocoque fighter, fighter-bomber and ground-attack aircraft. It was developed by Industria Aeronautica Romana, abbreviated as IAR, introduced in February 1941 as the replacement of the Polish PZL P-24. It initially performed well, but by the end of World War II was outperformed by late-war opponent aircraft. As the first serial fighter of Romanian design, just 346 IARs were built, with production plagued by supply problems, causing numerous variations and innovations. Used exclusively by the Romanian Air Force, it took part in Operation Barbarossa against the Soviet forces, including the Battle of Stalingrad, then against the U.S. as air defense units of Bucharest and protecting the oil fields of Romania. Following the Romanian coup in August 1944, they were used against the Germans in Hungary. Production of the IRA-80 ceased in December 1943 and they were withdrawn from service in June 1945. They re-entered service in January 1946 with the Soviets and while withdrawn from service again in August 1949, some IRA-80s flew as training machines until 1952. The origins of the IAR-80 stem from 1930, when the Romanian government, determined to maintain a national aircraft industry, would ensure IAR would build the successful bidder's aircraft in Romania under license. While the Polish-designed PZL P-11 and later the PZL P-24 of the Panstwawa Zakladi Lotnitsa company beat the IAR submissions for use in the Royal Romanian Air Force, IAR would be handed the contract to build the aircraft under license. The funds IAR gained from building the PZL aircraft allowed it to maintain a design studio led by Ion Grosu, who it is fair to say, borrowed heavily from the PZL designs in his own work. Indeed, Grosu maintained a conviction that the low-wing design of the unsuccessful IAR-24 prototype represented a better design than the PZL gull-wing design. Hitting the drawing board yet again, Ion studied the new PZL fighter, looking to incorporate its best features into a new aircraft, resulting in the IAR-80. The plagiarism was clear. The tail and rear fuselage was copied from the PZL-24E, as was the engine, engine mounting and cowling, while a new structure was designed for the fuselage forward of the cockpit, and as was the plan of Ion, the IR-80 dispensed with the distinctive gull-wing and fixed undercarriage of the Polish designs, replacing it with a low wing that also had a wide-track retractable landing gear. Initial testing revealed a few issues. The engine was replaced with a licensed version of the Gnome Roan 14K3. This change altered the center of gravity on the aircraft, so Ion stretched the fuselage to reset this, which allowed a larger fuel tank to be fitted. It also meant that the pilot now had issues seeing clearly when taxiing because he was so far back in the fuselage, so his seat was raised up into the bubble canopy for improved visibility. Although development of the IAR-80 began in 1937, progress was slow, and it wasn't until April 1939 that a first flight was conducted. Testing revealed that the aircraft was certainly a good aerial performer though the lack of firepower, having only two Belgian-made Fabrica Nationale 7.92mm machine guns, was unsatisfactory, and the production version was to mount six. The prototype was tested against the Heinkel HE-112 fighter, 30 of which had just been purchased from Germany. It performed well with the Romanian government ordering 100 of the aircraft in December 1939 and another 100 in August 1940. The production IAR-80 was 29 feet and 5 inches long, stood 11 feet 10 inches high, had a wingspan of 36 feet 1 inch, with a wing area of 180 square feet, most commonly powered by a IAR K144C 32 14-cylinder air-cooled radial piston engine producing 1,025 horsepower. Its maximum speed was 320 miles per hour, had a range of 450 miles, a service ceiling of 33,000 feet, and could reach 16,000 feet in seven minutes.
For armament, it initially sported six 7.92mm FN Browning machine guns. But with the Romanian aero industry heavily subject to the import of armaments from Belgium, in May 1940, the supply of these guns was cut off due to Germany's invasion, and with no other options available, IAR was forced to suspend production. Indeed, it wasn't until Ion Antonescu took control of Romania and aligned it with the Nazis by joining the Axis in November 1940 that armament supply was again resumed. With the first 50 built, they were finally delivered to the Romanian Air Force in February 1941. Continued supply problems plagued the AT throughout its life, causing its production to be very sporotic. But by April 1941, the Romanians were firmly in the German sphere, and as a result, the Germans released more FN guns for their use. With the extra guns available, the 80A model finally mounted the original complement of six guns. It also featured armored glass in the windscreen, seat back armor, self sealing fuel tanks, and a new gun sight, along with the newer 1025 horsepower K14 1000A engine. Meanwhile, with Germany reneging on the supply of the Junkers Ju-87 to provide a dive bombing function for the Romanian Air Force, modification of the existing IAR-80 as a dive bomber was seen as a reasonable option. The IAR-81 fighter bomber was in effect a minor change to the IAR-80A models that were then in production, adding a hinged bomb cradle under the center line to throw a 496-pound bomb clear of the propeller. But with the drag from the bomb cradle significantly hampering performance, it was disliked by the Romanian pilots. Later, 110-pound bomb racks were also added under each wing. These wing racks could also mount 100-liter drop tanks, allowing the 81 to be used as long-range fighters. Combat experience over the Soviet Union soon proved that even six of the 7.92 caliber guns lacked the required punch. Therefore, 13.2 mm FN machine guns, stripped from Romanian SM-79s, were installed in new lengthened wings, becoming the 80B. Just 50 of the new B-series were built until the limited supply of the FN guns reached an untenable level. Thus, the Romanians signed a deal with the Ikaria company in Germany for a supply of MG 20mm cannons. The 60 constructed 80 Cs were in fact 81 Bs, intended to be dive bombers, but delivered without the centerline bomb rack and fitted with the newly sourced Ikaria 20mm cannons. The 81C changed the guns once again, this time to the newer Mauser MG-15120. The 81C saw over 100 built, becoming the standard replacement for losses. The 80 and 81C versions, as well as all older A and B models, were later uplifted to the same gun platform in mid-1944 in an attempt to standardize production and logistics. Each would now mount two MG 20mm cannons and two FN 7.92 machine guns, this configuration becoming the IAR 80M. With the German invasion of Poland, Romania officially remained neutral, but in July 1940, after a Soviet ultimatum, Romania agreed to give up the territories of Bessarabia and northern Bukovina and the city of Herza. Just one month later, Hungary, under the Second Vienna Award, took the region of northern Transylvania. Then, on the 7th of September, southern Dobruja was ceded to Bulgaria under pressure from Germany. With its territory being carved away, under Ion Antonescu, the Iron Guard Party deposed the king, and by the 23rd of November, Romania had joined the Axis powers, looking to Germany for protection. Ironically unaware of Germany's endorsement of the Soviet Union's territory ultimatum, in the secret Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. And it was in Operation Barbarossa on the 22nd of June 1941, during the first day of the offensive, the IAR-80 patrols had their first combat engagement, achieving a single aerial victory. In the following six months, 20 IAR-80 and 81s had been lost in combat or accidents, 
with the aircraft struggling in encounters with more advanced Soviet designs like the Yakovlev Yak-9 and Lavochkin LA-5. Yet during the Battle of Stalingrad on the 12th of September, the 8th Fighter Group's IAR 80Bs claimed to have shot down seven Yaks, losing just two IARs. A somewhat dubious claim. By the summer of 1943, the IR-80s were transferred to air defense duties within Romania, where on the 1st of August, they faced 178 consolidated B-24 Liberator heavy bombers with the start of Operation Tidal Wave. While the U.S. was determined to strangle fuel supply by bombing nine oil refineries around Ploiesti, the IAR-80Bs of 61 and 62 squadrons of Group 6 Vanatoare, as well as IAR-80Cs from the newly formed 45 squadrons of Group 4, Vanatoare joined in a decisive victory against the Americans. Of the 178 B-24s attacked, only 89 returned to their bases. Of these, only 31 were deemed serviceable for a mission the next day. With over 500 aircrew lost, it was proportionally the most costly major Allied air raid of the war. But by the 21st of April, 1944, U.S. Army Air Force's P-51 Mustangs were providing long-range air cover for its bombers, and the tables turned. 81 Cs of the 1st, 2nd, and 6th fighter groups engaged by the Mustangs of the U.S. 31st Fighter Group resulted in 14 IARs shot down and the loss of 11 Romanian pilots. Romanian records of the IAR's performance are somewhat sketchy. For instance, on the, the 10th of June 1944, IAR-80s took part in a major air battle when Ploiesti was attacked with P-38 Lightning fighter bombers. The U.S. claimed 11 victories and a loss of 22 P-38s on that day, of which nine were shot down by the IARs. Meanwhile, the Romanians claimed 24 victories suffering just three losses. Such a contrast in records makes it hard to confirm performance in the campaign. Nevertheless, a period of less than four months, known as the American Campaign, had at least 32 IAR pilots killed in action. Because of heavy losses, all IAR 80 and 81 units were withdrawn from combat against Americans in July 1944, and IAR pilots started to convert to the more modern BF-109 G6. Despite the Soviet occupation of Romania on the 12th of September 1944, the IAR-80 remained in service until 1949, when they were replaced by the Russian LA-9 and IL-10. Those airframes with the lowest hours were modified by removing a fuel tank in front of the cockpit and adding a second seat, resulting in a trainer designated the IAR-80 DC. These were used for only a short time before being replaced by the Yak 11 and the Yak 18 in late 1952. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and hit the like button. If you would like to see more like this, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button. Hooray for now!